Hey folks, <clears throat> welcome to another segment of Game Over Outdoors. I'm Joel Miller, and today is not so much an actual fishing episode as much as it is just a little beginner's tip. I've been seeing a lot of people asking what they need to get started musky fishing, more so lately than usual. So, and there's all kinds of these videos out there. I'm sure if you look it up, you'll find them. But you know, a lot of people will go into when someone asks them what they need to get started. Those people are thinking what rods, what reels, what lines, what leaders, what baits. Okay, but a lot of uh, the answers you're going to get from seasoned musky anglers have nothing to do with any of those things. You know, if you're joining into the musky game at this point in time, the majority of people are catch and release musky anglers. So, our main goal, yes, we want to catch these fish, but we want them to be here tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So, the most important things for you to have are the things that you can use to release this fish safely back into the water to ensure its survival. So first of all, I'm going to start off with the net. Now, there are people who are against nets, and you know, to each their own. I am not one of those people. Um, nets save a lot of fish. If you don't have a net, that means you have to wear that fish to exhaustion to where you can grab it and then get it up in the boat with you. And then when it's in the boat, it's out of the water, which is not good for these fish. If you don't know anything about these fish, they might be the biggest, meanest fish in fresh water in your area, but they're the biggest wusses too. They cannot deal with time out of the water very well. So if you got that big net, then that fish can stay in the bag. You can unhook the fish in the bag, get it out, measure it, picture it real quick, get it back in the water. Um, my goal is normally to try to keep the fish out of the water no more than 15 seconds. So to show you, here is my net. So, and it's probably not all gonna fit in the frame. This is the Drifter XL. Now this is not the only net available. This is just my most recent net. I love this net. It is a little heavy, but I don't have too many issues even fishing solo with it. There, are, There's even the Drifter Double XL too. Um, but getting that huge bag, if you think that your net's too big, you're wrong, okay? It doesn't matter if you're catching 20 some inch fish. They have plenty of room in that bag to relax. They're not getting bound up and getting stressed up even more. So here's another thing, if your net's too small, that's causing even more stress on the fish. So it's actually counterproductive to use the net in that case. So, you know, you might go to Walmart and see that's a big net, okay, that's not a big net. I started off with a Walmart net and I can only imagine the amount of stress that I put on fish that I put in that bag. So get you a big net. Um, a good place to get nets is if, if you have the time, if you can go to a show. And the show season's normally in January through March and April okay so if you go to some shows then sometimes these people will have nets you know good deals on nets um, you don't have to pay the shipping charge because shipping is ridiculous on nets and rods both um, but if you're trying to get set up this summer and be ready for the fall then you might have to bite the bullet and you know pay that shipping fee but I highly recommend that Drifter XL um, just look around make sure that your your nets are knotless and coated okay the knotless part you know that helps keep your hooks out of them the coated part also helps keep your hooks out of them but also is better on the fish's 
body. If it's not coated, it'll kind of dig into the fish. So that's the first tool. Second tool I would recommend, hook cutters. This is just a uh, set of Rapala hook cutters that I've had for an extremely long time. And the funny thing about these is I never needed them until I, it was literally the week that I got them and then I needed them and then I, I use them all the time now. If there's ever a doubt that you can't get the hooks out without messing the fish's face up, cut the barbs off the hook. Hooks are replaceable. It takes a long time to replace that fish. So when in doubt, cut the hooks. Now, the recommended brand by most musky fishermen is Nipex. And that's probably when I upgrade, which I'm probably gonna be due for an upgrade soon, I'm probably gonna go to Nipex. They are extremely expensive, but you're also gonna be putting in a bunch of money to rods, reels, and whatever else. So, you know, that's just one of the tools of the trade. It's, they are very easy to use. I have seen them used. Um, very easy to cut hook sizes of any diameter. That's the big thing. Whatever you get, make sure you can cut any hook that's in your box. And not only for the safety of the fish, but for the safety of you. I've had two hooks put in my, my own flesh by fish before. So um, being able to get yourself out of that situation quickly is also very important. Because the longer you wait, the more adrenaline that wears off and you're gonna start feeling even more of it. So if you can get that off, get that out of your hand or whatever part of your body. I had one through the back of my hand poking at my palm before um, with a fish attached. And then I had one in my inner thigh once because I was bank fishing. and picked one up to unhook it and it flopped and it had the rear treble, hook front treble went through my inner thigh and the fish was still attached. Luckily it broke the bait in half. So, but you know, having those hook cutters is not only safer for the fish, but also for you. Okay, now the next one, or two I should say, have a long set of needle nose pliers. This keeps your hands farther away from the fish's mouth because you know they're loaded with teeth and it can allow you to get deeper in there if a fish were to choke a bait and that still keeps your hands pretty much out of the fish's mouth. But one pair of pliers is not enough. I would have a backup pair because you never know when you're gonna drop a pair or you might have to hold one part of the hooks with one set of pliers and reach in with another with the other set. So always at least have a couple pairs of needle nose pliers in your boat. That'll make life a lot easier for you. Now, one of the other ones, um, which I don't personally have, I'm probably going to add it eventually here but jaw spreaders. I've not personally had a situation where I absolutely needed them. I know they could benefit, but those jaw spreaders will help pry that fish's mouth open to where you can get in there and work. So that's just another tool that could also benefit you and the fish in the long run. And as far as measuring goes, I would highly recommend getting a bump board just because, you know, if you have carpet in your boat and you lay that fish on the carpet, you're taking that fish's slime coat off and that's it's basically that's basically its external immune system so if you're taking that slime coat away you are uh, subjecting that fish to infections later because its immune system is being worn off so having a slick surface to measure a fish on is very important so this is by musky bumper there are a few different brands out there but i mean they're very well built they're going to last you a really long time actually i finally broke the hinge on one that i had for like you know 10 plus years and i'm using it in this boat right now for a platform to stand on i have the base part of it back toward my heels and the fold out portion of it like this toward my toes and it's that sturdy i would rather have it over just a general piece of plywood in my boat so um anyway these go up to 60 inches you can get fatter versions this is a this is a fat boy version as well so um, or you can get slimmer versions. I don't think they're quite as expensive, but a uh, very useful tool for measuring the fish um, safely and then getting it back in the water quickly. So as far as the release tools goes, that's all I have. I know some people use Boga grips. Um, I personally have had a bad experience. Now they weren't Boga brand grips, but I've had a bad experience with fish grippers before. Um, so I kind of just quit using them ever since. Not that they're not useful tools. I've seen guides use them very efficiently, helping pry the fish's mouth open. They'll drape the fish's head over the side of the boat and that automatically lowers that jaw. So they can benefit, but if you do get a set, get a set that has a swiveling head. That way if the fish, these fish are known for gator rolling. So if that fish goes to gator rolling, that head's gonna swivel with them. Because if it doesn't, you'll split the jaw right in half and it'll literally look like this. That's what happened to me on a small fish in one of these creeks. It was actually my cousin's first one, and it was back when I had a net that had holes big enough for sublegal fish to actually swim through. So I went with the boga grip, or the, the fish gripper method, got it, was getting it unhooked, almost had it unhooked, and it went to gator rolling and split its jaw. So it was an unfortunate incident, but you know, some things you just learn the hard way. Um, but anyway, 
those are the tools that will definitely get you started in safely handling these fish. Um, I, I will add one more thing to the list and that's handling gloves, which personally I don't use them. I have all kinds of, I'm beat up just as bad as the fish or I, I start bleeding with just about any fish I catch and that's okay with me. I mean, it doesn't hurt that badly. Um, <clears throat> but if you're worried about that kind of stuff, you can get fish handling gloves. Um, it's safe for you. Fish are not gonna tear your hands up and um, yeah so you could get those gloves if you if you feel more comfortable with them uh, some people don't need the gloves as they you know they do the chest hold and tail grab but if you want to grab the fish by the gills it might be a good idea to get those I personally don't because I don't feel things as good with gloves on so if I don't feel you know that I'm in a bad spot in that fish's gill when I go to pick it up I'm probably doing more damage to the fish than anything so I personally don't use them but that's another thing that you could get for yourself so anyway, hopefully you found these tools, this, this video to be helpful to uh, your experiences on musky waters. And uh, definitely, I, I cannot stress it enough, look into getting these tools before you get into rods and reels and whatnot. Because you can catch a musky on just about anything you throw. I mean, obviously you're not gonna target them with six pound test you know, fluorocarbon. But um, I'll do another video later on you know, what I would recommend for a starter kit as far as um, getting started with rods, reels, and baits and whatnot. But I cannot stress the importance enough of these release tools. So hopefully you enjoyed this. You can take something away from this and help get yourself fully set up to tackle these muskies the safe way for you and the fish both. We'll see you next time on Game Over Outdoors.